In this introductory video about skin cancer, we are gonna talk about the classification scheme for the most common skin cancers, which include squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Dermatology can often feel like a lot of memorization, but I hope you'll be able to see in this video series how skin cancer in particular can be understood rather than memorized by understanding the relationship between histology and the gross clinical appearance of lesions. So to do this, I want to start with the basics and then move our way from there. So to do this, I've brought up a 3D image, a 3D cartoon histological image of the skin to remind us of what the three main skin layers are. So starting up here at the top, the very topmost layer, I'll remind you, is the epidermis, which provides us with barrier protection. And below the epidermis, in light pink here, is the dermis, which contains fibrous and elastic tissue, giving, us, giving our skin flexibility and strength. And it also contains blood vessels, nerve endings, and hair follicles, as you can see here, which are actually an appendage of the overlying epidermis, as you can see here. But finally, below the dermis, we have the subcutaneous fat, often referred to just as the sub-Q layer, which provides us with an energy store and insulation. And the reason that I just wanted to remind you of these three skin layers is because it turns out skin cancer can originate from any one of them. But we want to focus specifically on the epidermis because it turns out that the most common types of skin cancers originate specifically from this layer. So we want to go ahead and zoom into this layer further. So let's go ahead and zoom specifically into this portion of the epidermis right here. So zooming in, you can now see each layer or stratum of the epidermis. And we won't go through each of these layers in detail but I'll go ahead and remind you and orient you to say that at the bottom, directly overlying the dermis, which is highlighted here in this light pink color, is the stratum basale, also more colloquially referred to as the basal cell layer, which is highlighted here in red. At the very top, the most outermost layer of the epidermis facing the outside world is the stratum corneum here at the top. And just for comparison, I wanted to include alongside this an actual H&E or hematoxylin and eosin stain of the epidermis and dermis so you can see what each of these layers looks like on an actual H&E stain. Now the reason I bring all this up is that it turns out that this can give us a very intuitive way to classify skin cancer. And to do this, we really only need to answer one simple question, which is, what cell type does the skin cancer originate from? And there are two main cell types that we want to talk about in this context. So the first cell type is the keratinocyte. And the keratinocyte is the most common type of cell in the epidermis. It makes up essentially the bulk of the epidermis. And it starts off in the basal cell layer here as a stem cell and then differentiates as it goes through the different layers of the epidermis until it reaches the very top here in the stratum corneum, which remember is just a bunch of dead epithelial cells filled with all of this keratin, which I think is, is more easily visualized here on the H&E stain. Just for comparison, I'll circle a couple of keratinocytes here on the H&E stain as well. The second cell type that we're interested in is the pigment producing cell called the melanocyte. And melanocytes are typically located at the dermal epidermal junction, which is just a fancy way for saying in between the dermis and the epidermis. So they're located along this basal cell layer in red, and the cartoon image is highlighting a melanocyte in this purple cell that I'm circling here. And if you notice, this cell looks a little bit architecturally different than the surrounding keratinocytes, and it has these finger-like projections which allows it to distribute the melanin that it produces to the differentiating keratinocytes, giving the skin its pigment. Now if we jump over to the right to our h &E stain, this cell right here in the basal cell layer strikes me as a melanocyte, and it's a little difficult to appreciate the finger-like projections on this particular stain, but the fact that it looks pretty structurally different than these keratinocytes that we circled earlier, and it's located on the basal cell layer clues me into the fact that it looks like a melanocyte. All right, so with that histology mini lesson, the big takeaway point that I wanna make is that if skin cancer originates from a keratinocyte, we simply call it keratinocyte carcinoma. Simple enough, right? On the other hand, if skin cancer originates from a melanocyte, we call it melanoma. 
And as an aside, you might be wondering why we don't call this simply melanocyte carcinoma. And the reason is, is because carcinoma describes cancer of an epithelial cell. Melanocytes are actually not epithelial cells. They're derived from neural crest cells, hence why we call it by a slightly different nomenclature of melanoma. But all details aside, keratinocyte carcinomas and melanomas make up the most common types of skin cancer. Now it turns out that when it comes to classifying keratinocyte carcinomas, there's one more subdivision that we need to be aware of. And the way that keratinocyte carcinomas are subdivided are as such. So if keratinocyte carcinoma arises from any of the keratinocytes in the basal cell layer, we call it appropriately basal cell carcinoma or BCC for short. On the other hand, if keratinocyte carcinoma arises from any of the keratinocytes above the basal cell layer, so the stratum granulosum, spinosum, etc., we call it a squamous cell carcinoma, or SCC for short. And the way that I remember this is that squame literally means scale. And remember that we're getting essentially more scaly as we move up towards the stratum corneum because we're accumulating all of that keratin. Another way to remember that is that squamous cells are often the term that's used to describe these outer epithelial scales, cells of the epidermis. Now the last thing I want to touch on to hopefully tie all of this together is a little bit of epidemiology. So keratinocyte carcinomas are the most common types of skin cancer. Depending on where you look, one figure that's commonly cited is that they account for about 97% of all skin cancers, while melanoma, on the other hand, accounts for about less than 2% of all skin cancers. But what's interesting is, is that the mortality attributed to each of these cancers is inversely proportional to its overall prevalence. So to illustrate this, it turns out that about 80% of deaths due to skin cancer are due to melanoma, or I should say are from melanoma. So you can see that it can be a very deadly skin cancer. On the other hand, keratinocyte carcinoma is generally pretty curable, especially when it's caught early. However, that's not to say that it can cause, in some cases, a not so insignificant amount of morbidity for patients. So with that, that concludes our introductory video on skin cancer, and I'll just leave you with one final word, which is that you might have noticed that 97% plus less than 2% does not equal 100%, and unfortunately, it turns out there are other cell types in the skin that can give rise to skin cancer that we didn't get the chance to talk about. But the key takeaway, again, is that the most common types of skin cancer, the keratinocyte carcinomas and melanomas, arise from a keratinocyte and melanocyte, respectively.